Do you want to be able to record images like this rock pile on your Mega360? A properly installed Mega360 will enable you to see images ahead of the boat like the three boulders. The Humminbird Mega360 is compatible with all Solex G2 and G3 series as well as the new Apex series. In the Helix series, the Mega360 will work with G3N and G4N units, but they must have that plus on the end of the description. So if you have a Helix 8 MDI G3 or G4N, it will not work because it is not a plus unit. If you have a Helix 8 that is a side imaging plus unit G3N or G4N, it will work. The Helix G3N 9, 10, or 12 with Mega DI Plus or side imaging plus will work with the Mega 360. In the G4N series, it must be a Mega DI Plus or a Side Imaging Plus unit, and you have the options in the G4N series with the Helix 9, 10, 12, 15. Remember, the 15 is new in the Helix series for G4N. The two silver dots on the top right are a wet switch, so the Humminbird Mega 360 will not work out of the water. The teardrop shape that you see right here is very important when you are installing this. This flatter part is to point directly forward. This tapered part is to go to the back. And even though it's sitting on my deck angled out to the side, that will change once it is deployed. So be careful when you are doing your install that you make sure that the trolling motor is deployed so that you can see that this flatter part of the, or the larger part of the teardrop is facing forward. That's super important. The trolling motor is now deployed and you can see that the large part of the teardrop is facing forward and that is exactly where you want it to be. Here's a side view to show that the back of the teardrop, the narrow part, is right here, once again facing the back, and the front of the teardrop is here facing the front. So that is going to give you the true readings on your Mega360, so make sure you align it properly. For best readings on the Mega360, make sure that the spinning transducer part down here is six inches under the water. That is what is recommended in the manual. Another very important installation consideration is the bottom of the transducer versus the top of the propeller when spinning. I try to maintain at least an inch and a half and there is a recommendation in the manual to keep a minimum clearance there which is I believe one inch minimum. Uh, again I stress that I'd rather be safe than sorry so I always make sure that I keep a proper distance between the transducer and the prop. I run a 52 inch Ultrex, so that is why there is a great deal of clearance. If you have a 45 inch shaft, then you have to be a lot more careful. The Mega 360 does come with a stopper ring here to avoid you accidentally lifting the trolling motor into the spinning transducer prop. So make sure that is adjusted properly. The Humminbird Mega360 will allow you to do side imaging and Mega360 imaging and it is very important to understand the key difference in image quality. For the best image quality with Mega360, you need to keep the boat sitting still in spot lock will give you your best readings. While side imaging, your best readings are going to be at two to five miles per hour. The boat is sitting in the circle at the bottom and their weed line is straight ahead. Three big boulders at the one o'clock position and a log to the right. I've positioned the boat so the rock piles directly in front of me and I can work the transition zone to the left and to the right of the boat. The boat is currently sitting over the rock pile to work the transition area. White dots in the ditch are fish and I caught 
walleye, smallmouth, and crappie out of this ditch. This certainly looks like a pickup to me and by the ring distance it's the right length. The laydown log has a small shadow while the vertical log has a tall shadow. This is a big bass spot with the key spot on the spot being the boulder on the left ahead of the boat. Knowing the weed line is ahead of the boat, you can adjust your presentation accordingly. The ring distance is going to help you gauge the size of the spot and the boat position will help keep you on the hard spot. In the previous slide, you saw that the range was at 70 feet and they were labeled 17.5 feet, 35 feet, 52.5 feet, and 70 feet. One of the really cool features of the Mega 360 is that those rings will automatically adjust in size. So let's say I take my cursor and I bring it up to 100 feet. Then the ring size is now 25 feet per ring. So it is now 25 feet, 50 feet, 75 feet, and it's 100 feet. And that's done automatically for you, making your casting distance very easy to figure out. There are three or four bass to the left of the boulder, just in front of it at about the 11 o'clock position. This particular shadow clearly shows the right size and shape of a bass. A cast of 25 to 50 feet in the 11 o'clock position will put you on the beds. Mega 360 revealed the beds in the 1 o'clock position, which unveiled the mystery of why this was the spot on the spot. With the 360, it's easy to see why there's two waypoints marked on the rock pile that produce fish. This is a productive area with lots of scattered boulders. You can see the shadow of the small stump at 2 o'clock and the shadow of the larger stump at 10 o'clock. In the first picture, you will see laydowns in 14 feet of water. In the second, you will see a nice big long laydown and some stumps, and the Mega 360 will show you where to cast. Use the shape of the shadows of the fish to determine if it's your target species. The fork tail of this shadow clearly reveals that it's a carp. The two pound small is shown by the white spot in the dark part of the bed. If you want to get the best possible pictures to share, make sure you have an SD card in your unit. And here's the bed here that we were looking at. And there's the fish, the white spot. You can see a little log here. And all I need to do is press and hold the mark button. And it's going to say successfully saved. And now that is onto my SD card, which I can take to my computer. And then from there, I can get the best possible image. The shadow from the fish in the water column reveals that it's a pike or a muskie. The tightly bald group of herring indicates that there is danger nearby. Predator fish sit underneath the school of herring for an easy meal. The herring to the right of the boat are loosely schooled and therefore not likely any danger nearby. The rice you see to the left and right of the boat are Lake Simcoe perch. The Mega 360 will reveal the direction of travel of the school of perch. Using Mega 360 and Minkota spot lock is a deadly combination on Lake Simcoe perch. This is actually on the water and I want to show you that there is a stump right here and you can see the shadow behind it. And you can also see another stump down here that has some roots going off in different directions that almost looks like a five-legged spider. If you want the best pictures with your Mega 360, put the speed on one. If you want to cover more water, then you're going to generally use three or four. Please keep in mind that these shots are taken while the boat is on spot lock, and I've slowed the speed down to get the best image. The Mega 360 is a great tool for showing you structure and images and it is very effective for your time management with few wasted casts. You're not fishing blind. So for example here I am looking at a spot that is in about 14 feet of water and it's going to update here in a second. There's some fish here in the white spots and you can see it's a little harder bottom and I would have no idea that that was there without my Mega 360. 
these are my underwater eyes. If I don't have my Mega 360, it literally feels like I am fishing blind. It will change the way you fish. Without the Mega 360, I would not have known those fish were there. It allows me to see where they are and I can cast to them before I get to them. So it is just a tremendously efficient tool for helping you to be more successful on the water. Here are my settings to help get those nice clear images you saw earlier. My 360 pinging is on. My 360 sensitivity is at about 12. And if I want to get to the contrast, I have to right cursor to the 360 enhance, and I'll get to that in a minute. My range is at 55. My color palette most of the time is at color palette four, and I will change it depending on the body of water. My 360 dynamic contrast is on and my display is the front mode and it is currently at the speed of four so i generally run it at four the majority of the time i like to take and use my plus button up here so that i zoom it into two times and i just find that that shows me clearer images so those are my basic settings on my mega 360. Remember, the clearer the water, the more you're going to increase your sensitivity. And in dirtier water, you're going to decrease the sensitivity. So those are general rules of thumb for all sonar. When I hit 360 Enhance, you can see that the sensitivity scale comes up. And if I wanted to adjust that, I would just use the right cursor or the left cursor to do that. But I could go down to Contrast or to Sharpness. And you can see my contrast is currently set at about 14. Sharpness is off and contour mode is off. So those are the enhanced settings that I use. Using your Mega 360 is a lot like using a bait cast or an adjustable wrench. You do have to play with your settings all the time. So don't be afraid to play with them. So for example, I can take my menu and I can look at this and I can go in and I can try different color palettes. So let's say three, say two, and just play with them. And I generally, as I said earlier, I have it on four. It seems to show contrast pretty well. So now I exit out of that. And then the main two that you're gonna play with is your sensitivity. Right now I've got mine on 12 and I can adjust it up. And you can see it's getting pretty hot and I can't get as much detail. So I'm going to back it off so that I can see things a little bit more clearly and make things stand out more. And let's say I want to go and play with my contrast. I go to 360 Enhance and go down to Contrast and I can play with that and just see the differences in the picture. And it does take a while to get it dialed in and it changes with different bodies of water. And sometimes even within the same day, if you get water getting dirtier as the day goes on or clearer as the day goes on, you may have to play with the sensitivity and contrast. But again, think of it like a bait caster or an adjustable wrench and you will be well on your way to having success with your Mega 360. I use frontal view the majority of the time, but you can switch it out if you like. So if you do want to go to the full view, you just simply go down to the display and you find the 360 and there it is. And once again, you can zoom that in to make it look better. But if you want to see all around your boat, it's as simple to do as that. Going back to the frontal view, which I prefer, I go to 360 front view and I click on, sorry, just leave it on that and hit exit out of that and I am there where I want to be. The nose of the boat is here where the heading sensor is and I am on a ring of 15 feet because my range is set at 60. So the back of the boat would be well past the ring down below here. And just keep that in mind that it is taking the position at the heading sensor. In order to get the Mega 360 image to display depth, you are going to need the appropriate Y cable. In my case, I have a built-in MDI on my Ultrex. So I need this cable, the 14M360 to DDIY. If I had an external transducer on my trolling motor, then I would need the 9 Mega 360 to DDIY. 
I, Y in order to get depth. When selected, the Mega360 transducer will stop spinning and do side imaging. I would like to show you now how simple it is to go from Mega360 to side imaging using your Mega360 transducer. So right now I currently have the menu for the 360 and you can see all the 360 features we previously went over. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to take my exit button and that clears off the express menu for the 360. I am going to press and hold my view button down and that is going to show me sonar with a right cursor and I would have chart options and system options, but side imaging is a sonar option. So I am going to right cursor and you can see that I have a side imaging view, a 360 view and a split side imaging view, but I'm just gonna go simply to the side imaging view and there it is. If I want to get to the side imaging express menu, I simply hit the menu button once and you can see now that instead of it being 360 settings, it is now side imaging settings and that's all there is to switching to side imaging. The Humminbird Mega 360 transducer is this part right here and it spins and that will give you your readings. But please remember that you can also choose from your Humminbird unit that it can do side imaging, in which case it will lock into this position and you'll get a reading from the left side and from the right side. I also want you to observe that the Mega 360 shaft is independent of the trolling motor. So in this case, you can see that the transducer is locked in the position to give you side imaging. And you don't have to worry about the direction of the trolling motor head because it simply doesn't matter as you are on an independent shaft for the Mega 360. So that is definitely an advantage. With the 360 transducer locked, you are going to get a true left side reading and a true right side reading without any obstructions on either side. And once again, trolling motor is not moving, so you're getting great images. Here's the beginnings of an underwater point. And once again, I am finding this with the side imaging. You can see the shadow in behind it to the right of the boat. And it is a nice small spot. And you can see we're getting a little bit deeper and we're just gonna cruise by. Once again, I want you to keep in mind that your side imaging works best when moving. Your images are not nearly as clear as when you are sitting still so again keep the boat moving that two to five miles per hour and you can see that there is a shadow behind this hump there is deep water behind it and you can see the harder bottom area coming up to the right it's definitely lighter there and this is very different from anything in this particular lake so your mega 360 side imaging does a great job of showing you a variety of structure and once again it is in that fixed position not attached to the trolling motor which is key. There tends to be a lot of confusion when it comes to using the Humminbird Mega 360 and storing waypoints so there are some basic things that you need to understand. If you have an iPilot link trolling motor you can use the heading sensor as long as it has the appropriate software updates. If you do not have an iPilot link trolling motor, you could get a Humminbird AS GPS HS puck and that will allow you to use the waypoints. But before you can actually use the waypoints, you have to go into your settings. So right now I am on the 360 express menu because I hit the menu button once. If I hit the menu button again, it is going to show up with the toolbar across the top. And you'll notice that I am on accessories. And when I go under accessories, I can hit Mega 360 settings. And if I hit the right cursor, it's going to show me some more 360 information. And I can see that right now the 360 is on Mega Chirp, the overlay is on, 
the 360 boat icon, which is down here, is on. And most importantly, the navigation on 360 is on. If that was off and it is set to off in the default settings, then you would not be able to store waypoints. So you have to make sure you go into accessories and turn that on. These are the minimum software versions to use the iPilot Link heading sensor. Here is the bottom of the 360. You can see on the left, the two little silver wet switches and come up and the teardrop was aligned properly and coming up the shaft here. You notice I have some red tape and that red tape is aligned with the slot in the shaft and I have a gap in the red tape there. So basically I align the slot here with the bracket and I align it with the two slots, the red tape. You could etch a small mark and you can see I've got one etched there into the shaft so that everything is aligned. That way when you take it on and off, you have a reference point and it's easy to line it back up with the key factor being once again, that the large part of the teardrop is facing forward. I also have two red tape marks a little further down the shaft. That way when I go to raise the trolling motor in shallower water, I just simply raise it up to the mark of the red tape on both sides and it gives me an equal distance so that I maintain the gap down here between the transducer and the top of the prop so that I don't get any damage. And once again, just back it up a little bit. You can see that I just simply loosen them off and there's a couple of Allen keys here. It's really quick and easy to loosen to adjust it to get it to the height you want if you need to fish shallower water. From the stowed position, it is very simple to raise the Mega 360 shaft. As we mentioned earlier, the Allen keys are loosened. Here is one, here's the other one, and you simply take this and you slide the red mark up to the base of the bracket for the Ultrex and that is now in the position you want. However, the stopper ring that we mentioned earlier, which is on the shaft of the trolling motor, it must be lowered down to the red tape mark in order to be able to pull the trolling motor up. If this were to remain here, it is going to hit this and therefore you could not raise the trolling motor. So once again, two Allen keys, one on this side, one on the opposite side. You loosen it off and you slide it down to here and then you can pull the trolling motor up. The red tape marks simply enable you to make the trolling motor adjustments from deeper to shallow water quickly and effectively without worrying about damaging your transducer from the trolling motor prop. The Mega 360 for me has been a game changer, just like the Minn Kota Ultrex with Spotlock. Hopefully you have found this video helpful and enjoyable and learned some stuff. There is a big learning curve with the Mega 360, but as you've seen, it can definitely help you be more successful on the water. And as always, a like, share, subscribe is always very much appreciated. See you at the next video.